circumstances may take the decision out of Cole's hand. But then again, if he pitches lights out, he might take the decision out of their hands and right back into his own. going on on the North Shore and something special has been cooking up at PNC Park all season long. Fans hungry for more wins. Might see another one tonight as the Pirates take on the Milwaukee Brewers in game three of this three game series. Take a look now at the Central Division standings. The Pirates just a half game behind the Idle Cardinals. A win tonight would tie them for first place heading into tomorrow night's series opener here. The Reds three and a half off the pace. Hi again, everybody, along with Steve Blass, I'm Tim Neverett. Happy you're watching Pirates Baseball with us tonight. Robbie Insmukowski will join us in a little while. Marlon Byrd had an impressive debut as a Pirate in the seventh inning, a three-run blast. That opened the game up. Yeah, welcome to Pittsburgh, Marlon Byrd. And, uh, yeah, it really did. It gave the Pirates some breathing room. This game was not in the books when he hit this three-run shot to straightaway center field. But Marlon Byrd arrived in Pittsburgh. He arrives at home plate there. He has made a lot of friends his first night in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania and at PNC Park. Well, Marlon Bird getting the standing O and the curtain call last night. John Buck, who also came over from the Mets, will start behind the plate tonight. We'll see him make his Pirates debut. Garrett Cole, the right-hander, going for the Bucks on seven days rest. Last time on a week's rest, Steve, he got himself a win against Arizona. Yeah, we hope that uh, repeats itself. You've got to be a little careful, and you've got to consider both sides of the coin because sometimes you get in a situation where a pitcher might get a little rusty. But uh, based on what he did last time, uh, we're very optimistic. Garrett Cole has had very, very good control. You might want to see him be a little bit edgy in terms of the corners tonight because this is a very aggressive swinging Milwaukee Brewers team. Derek Cole taking on Giovanni Gallardo, a guy who's been traditionally tough against the Pirates. But the bats have been going. The beer has been battered by the Bucks. 28 hits over the last two games for Pittsburgh. Can they keep it going tonight? Lineups and first pitch coming up from PNC Park.
Allegheny River right next to it. We get ready for the third and final game of this three game series between the Pirates and the Brewers. Rookie right hander Garrett Cole has the ball tonight. And the other half of the battery for the first time as a Pirate John Buck who came over in the trade with Marlon Byrd. Take a look at Milwaukee's lineup written up by Ron Renneke. Scooter Jeanette leads off. Gene Segura, the shortstop, hits second. Luke Croy, Ramirez, and then Carlos Gomez, the center fielder, has hit well against the Pirates this year. 362, four homers, eight runs batted in. Rookie Chris Davis in left field. Caleb Gindel in right. Juan Francisco at first. And the pitcher, Giovanni Gallardo, batting ninth against Garrett Cole. Who is making his 14th start? The Cole numbers brought to you by Chevrolet. Six and six, 381. He has faced the Brewers once. He beat them. The Pirates gave him a lot of offensive support. It was a 10-3 Pirate win. And Garrett Cole working to another veteran catcher, so it shouldn't be all that much of a transition. He has worked with Russell Martin. He is now working with John Buck. And uh, I was pointing out too the. Uh, the, the idea that Garrett Cole has very good control. He's made 13 starts, just 17 walks, Tim. And uh, this is a freewheeling Brewers team, so you can really tease them with some borderline stuff. You stay in the middle of the strike zone, the hitting zone, and they're, they've got a chance to wear you out. But they will chase stuff away from the strike zone, so you might not want to have that pinpoint control, well, especially in the middle of the hitting area. Let's take a look at the defense behind Garrett Cole in the outfield left to right Jose Tabata Andrew McCutcheon and Marlon Bird infield left side Alvarez and Mercer Walker and Gabby Sanchez out there again John Buck behind the plate catching Garrett Cole John Buck and you know the Brewers are going to try to run they're a running team they lead the National League in stolen bases and John Buck going to go right out and have a little little uh, pregame talk with Garrett Cole and what an overview for this game tonight Tim I think is that you want the Pirates to remember it's Thursday it's not Friday yet the Cardinals are not here for that big series they've got work to do tonight sometimes you can start thinking about that and I don't think the Pirate players will we as fans are thinking about Friday night and the Cardinals coming to town for the big series but there is work to be done tonight so don't lose track of Thursday before Friday gets here Russell Martin had helped John Buck and his preparation for this ball game. Buck last night was told he'd be starting today. So he took home some video of Garrett Cole and two guys in the bullpen and started to familiarize himself with the Pirates staff. Here's the first pitch of the game. It's up high for ball one to Scooter Jeanette. Eighty four degrees the game time temperature here at PNC Park and Jeanette lines one in the center field a base hit a leadoff single for the rookie second baseman. Garrett will give up his share of hits 78 innings, 75 hits and again you might want to tease them a little bit. And uh, some of that uh, business between Garrett Cole will be involving Dan Iasonia, the home plate umpire, be calling balls and strikes. Important for Garrett, every other starter to learn the umpire strike zone. His is more important. You got to deal with what he's calling, not what you think you're going to get. Gene Segura follows this one off. And we talked about the fact that these guys in Brewer uniforms are free swingers. They will be aggressive in the count and at times you'll see him swing at the first pitch. I know there was one instance last night, Steve, where you saw back to back hitters swing at the first pitch and make outs and Charlie Morton had two outs on two pitches before you knew it. A one. Now it's nothing in two. Yeah, I guess uh, yeah two quick outs two pitches that's great. But you can also be involved with two quick base hits too and put you in a hole so. Uh, again. Not be right down the middle of the strike zone. No balls, two strikes, nobody out, one on. Top half of the first inning just underway from PNC Park. Ground ball to third. Pedro's got it. Walker, the turn. Safe at first is Segura. A little bit of an off uh, target throw from Pedro over to Neil Walker. It was an awkward reach downstairs for Neil. That's uh, that's a difficult thing for a guy trying to make the pivot uh, downstairs and then get back up to the throw. This should have been two. 
Walker did what he could and Segura just got there ahead of time. Yeah you combine that uh, little bit of an off uh, off target throw with the speed of Segura that's going to happen. I think I believe say same situation happened last night. Bang bang at first and Segura wins the race one down and one on and Jonathan Lucroy at the play throw over by Cole. Segura the National League leader in stolen bases so if they're going to run we're going to find out here. Russell Martin threw a runner out early in the game last night that does send a message. Doesn't always eliminate the whole approach but it helps. Strike call. Martin working a lot with John Buck on Buck's arrival. Buck long time big leaguer with the Kansas City Royals also with Toronto. With Miami. And with the Mets. He's an all star with Toronto. But uh, three years ago. 2010. And this ball gets away. That might be a third base situation. So Segura is heading for third and he will be there. Gene Segura at third base and one out and bad news for the Bucks early. And really this is a game where the Pirates can't afford those kind of mistakes. This is one. They've got to have tonight. Just a bad throw by Cole. Yep. When you uh, get that throw tangled up. Between the first baseman and the runner on that side, on the second base side of first, there's just too much congestion. So the throw offline, and uh, I wonder, talking to Gabby Sanchez, if you feel that he still should have been able to get the glove on it. And the situation now is a runner on third base with one out. Oh, one pitch to Lucroy. One ball and one strike. And it's hard to place any more importance over one game than another, but they're a half game out of the team that is idle tonight, traveling here to Pittsburgh, the Cardinals. You got a chance to be in a first place tie with them tomorrow to start a really big weekend series. And Lucroy flares one into right field. It's one nothing Milwaukee. That's just the second time in the last 30 games. The Brewers have plated a run in the first inning. Kind of fights it off over the head of Neil Walker for the little flare single. You go back to that opportunity to turn that double play. And Segura has good speed, but I think a chest high throw from Pedro to Neil Walker would have given them the opportunity, a real good chance to turn the two. And, you well, know, can't do anything about it now, but move on. Keep it at one nothing game. Well, Ramos Ramirez gives the Pirates another chance. Walker the easy one and over to Gabby for an easy two. Brewers get a run on two hits. Nobody left. Heading to the bottom of the first.
Pirates coming to the plate for the first time against Giovanni Gallardo between innings. Garrett Cole talking to Gabby Sanchez. Well, yeah, whose fault? Uh, who wants to, yeah. to assume uh, blame? And probably a little bit of both. It could have been a better throw, uh, and maybe Gabby could have found a way to, to block that. Pirates lineup brought to you by Toyota. Jose Talada back in the leadoff spot. Neil Walker batting second. McCutcheon third. Alvarez in the cleanup spot. Marlon Bird bats fifth tonight. Then Gabby and John Buck with Jordy Mercer batting eighth against Milwaukee this year. He's liked hitting against the Brewers. Eric Cole batting ninth against Gallardo. And Giovanni Gallardo, the last two starts have been against the Cincinnati Reds. And in those two starts, he's just given up two runs. Uh, two starts ago, six innings of scoreless ball. And then last time out against the Reds, no decision. Six innings, just giving up two runs. He has been very consistent against everybody the last four years. Well, he's been very good against the Pirates. Ten and four against the Bucks, a 277 earn run average. Yeah, no this stranger. A, 17 starts. Yeah, 18, uh, 18 starts now. 19 appearances overall against the Bucks. One and two against the Pirates this year. Down the ground ball to short. Segura waits. Goes on to first to get him. One gone. 6 3 goes the put out. First out for the Pirates. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Providing us with fabulous overhead pictures of the beautiful city of Pittsburgh. He's got his pirate parrot with him. Ready for action. One out, nobody on, and Walker the hitter. Little batting 254. Neil was off last night. Josh Harrison started instead against the left-hander Tom Gorzolani. Harrison had himself a very good night. Went three for three with an RBI and scored three times. And against the right-hander Gallardo, Neil back in the lineup. And Jay Hay had himself a night. Pirates winning last night seven to one. Makes life a lot easier with a bunch of runs. Walker hits this one well to center field, but it's going to hang up for Gomez. Yeah, two men out. Interesting to see how the ball carries. Last night, the ball was just flying, just a lot of carry and, and finish to balls hit to the outfield. The ball that uh, Bird hit, the, the triple at top of the hit off the scoreboard in right field. A lot of carry. And McCutcheon coming to the plate now to a nice round of applause. And McCutcheon has been outstanding. He's raised his average up to 323. Last night, another multi hit game went two for four with an RBI, a stolen base, and a run scored. And he's hitting a, a ton here in August. League leaders where he ranks in the National League in a variety of categories. Multi hit games tied with Matt Carpenter. Of St. Louis for first. Hits he's second. Total bases he's third. Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. MVP, Steve? Certainly a candidate. Certainly a candidate. Still has 30 games to go, 29 after tonight. So now still, you're uh, able to even improve on those numbers. Yeah, if you wanted to uh, really flesh out the candidacy numbers. Bump that home run total up, get that up around 25, 25 to 30. Uh, that would certainly help enhance the possibilities. Kutch is hitting a major league best 425 this month. 37 for 87 in August. Two and two. Gardo with two men out, the base is empty. Three men on the left side of the infield. And McCutcheon in the center field. Gomez not going to go. And it's Kessler. Turn on the Jets for Kutch. McCutcheon around second, heading for third. And he's going to be held at third. Wisely. They had the relay set up. The ball was in the hands of the cutoff man when Andrew got to third base. Boy, it was exciting, though. We're all thinking. Touch them all. <laughs> he got to touch three of them. Gomez takes the chance. 
It doesn't happen. And here we go. We talk about a jump start emotionally for these fans. They know that ball is by them, and they know it's Andrew. And Andrew thinking base hit, and now, now he's thinking more than that, obviously. But that early start probably cost him a chance to go for it, and he knows it. Fourth triple of the year for McCutcheon. And Pedro a chance to drive him in. Tying run at third, two outs. Just so you know, Gallardo has hit 14 home runs, or given up 14 home runs. He knows it. And he started out of the gates. That would have been an exciting play at the plate. That's one and one now to Pedro. Last night, Pedro went 0 for 4. Average of 238. League leading 32 home runs. That's a career high. 86 RBIs. That's a career high. And a team lead. One better than his total last year for the RBIs. 1 1. And this one is hit down to first base. Francisco tossed to Gallardo. And McCutcheon left at third base after his triple. We'll go to the second. 1 0 Milwaukee. Seven to six after Oakland blew him out last night. Brandon Moss had a couple of home runs for the A's last night. But tonight it's all about the Buckos as they have come dressed for a win tonight. One nothing Brewers. McCutcheon with the triple. A bad start out of the gates. Might have had four bases, but Pirates do not get a run in the bottom of the first inning. And right now Garrett Cole pitching to Carlos Gomez. Pitches up. One and zero. Oh. Well, Max Scherzer came into his start for the Tigers, just finishing up on that game. 19 and 1 record. When you're 19 and 1, you get off the hook when you have a bad day. That's the way it works. Gomez fouls this one away, and it's one ball and one strike. Yeah, you're 19 and 1. You can get away with a lot of things. Yep, yep. That's when things are going in your direction. Yeah, it's been quite a year for Max Scherzer. You'd have to say a shoe in for the American League Cy Young. 1 1 pitch. Ground ball up the middle and a base hit. Lead off single for Gomez. And the Brewers have the leadoff man aboard for the second straight inning. And you'll have to keep an eye on him too with his 31 steals. Now if you want to 
take part in our telecast tonight. You can have your tweet read on the air, perhaps, or shown on the air in the bottom scroll. Tweet us using the hashtag Bucks Booth for questions, comments about the Buckos. Maybe some comments about that outfit. Okay, they heard the message already. There you go. That one's for you, I'm sure, Steve. That one's directed at me. Direct message for Steve Blatt. Chris Davis, the left fielder. Davis takes the ball. Davis getting a good opportunity. He and Caleb Gindle splitting a little time in left field, but Davis getting the bulk of the work since the suspension of Ryan Braun. And the Brewers in a little bit more of a transitional phase. Not only is Braun out, Corey Hart's out for the year due to injury. Same with Ricky Weeks. So Scooter Jeanette, the second baseman, getting time there. It's been a revolving door at first base, filling in for Hart. Two balls and no strikes to Davis. Ron Renneke getting a look at the future, perhaps. They like Davis. They like Jeanette. Runner goes. And no throw and a stolen base for Carlos Gomez, his 32nd of the season. Much you can do when the ball's on the ground. Very good jump. I don't know if John Buck could have done much if he gets a clean catch. A three ball, no strike count. Swinging three and oh, it's deep to right field. Bird hits up, it's off the wall. Runner's going to come around third. Gomez will score. It's two nothing, Milwaukee. On an RBI double by Chris Davis taking a 3 0 pitch the other way off the Clemente wall. And why not? You got a guy that throws a lot of strikes. He's trying to get back in the at bat. Puts it right out there where you can extend your arms and he gives it a ride to right field off the short porch. And Marlon Bird getting a little education on what kind of bounces you can get off. That material out there and there are a variety. You've got the chain link fence. You've got some support. Beams that will bounce it straight back and come back at you and go sideways. That one goes a little to the side and an easy trip from second base for Carlos Gomez. Double number eight, RBI number 19. Gindle, first ball swinging, fouls it back. No balls and one strike to the right fielder. 287 is average, three home runs and 10 runs batted in. Gindle started in left field last night with one for four. I talked to Marlon Bird yesterday before the game about playing this wall. He's played it before as a visiting team member. He said he knows you can't get too close to it. He said it's going to hit that chain link fence in front of it and it might drop straight down. Otherwise, it could hit a, a, a railing or something and bounce back. He said just don't get too close to it. Worst case scenario, the ball comes down and you go pick it up. Give, give yourself some room, some wiggle room. 1 1 to Gindle, trying to bunt. Fouled it off, and that's a strike. One and two. The Brewers with a two to nothing lead early off of Garrett Cole. The only thing you don't have to worry about in right field with the scoreboard is where the foam padding comes down, and you've got about uh, the size of a baseball that can get jammed under there and doesn't bounce anywhere. And we've seen that a couple times this year around from right center all the way to the left field foul pole. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. One gone for the Brewers in the second. And Cole records his first strikeout tonight. He goes bottom to the top in the zone. Yeah, and that, there's the thing too. You can you can be out of the strike zone, and, and they'll chase a lot of those types of pitches. They're that aggressive. Juan Francisco, first baseman, number eight hitter. After him is the pitcher Giovanni Gallardo. Certainly not an automatic out. Oh, with his two home runs this year. A very good hitting pitcher. Davis off of second base. The stretch by Cole in the pitch and a ground ball to Neil Walker. And that returns Francisco, two man out, and Davis moving up to third on the play. Yeah. Third and two down for Gallardo. Gallardo is, is a good hitting pitcher, but operative word, he's still a pitcher trying to hit. 
And many times against a power guy like Garrett Cole, the, the good hitting pitchers, they're not all that crazy about that because these guys throw the ball hard, and if you get hit, it could hurt. Not that they're going to throw at you a lot. But I think most pitchers like to go up there against the, the soft tossers. A little more comfortable. Back to ground ball to Alvarez. Runner left to third, but the Brewers get a run on two hits. Move the man. After an inning and a half, it's Milwaukee two and the Pirates nothing. Center field, way back to the wall, and let's go flying with Marlon Bird. Welcome to the Bird, Mr. Bird. Marlon Bird with a big impression last night, a three-run home run in the seventh inning in his Pirates debut, just coming over from the New York Mets. And Bird with his first at bat tonight. 22 home runs, 74 runs batted in. And also very media savvy. Uh, Robbie Nismikowski interviewed him after the game and he acknowledged the fan. He acknowledged the city, what it's been like, uh, and what it will be like to break out of this 20 game skid. Uh, made a lot of friends last night. Pitch outside to him, one ball and one strike. Bird's been around the block. Been with a number of teams, including the Red Sox last year. Mets this year. In the whole one and two now. Bird broke in with the Philadelphia Phillies in 2002. He's been with the Washington Nationals. Spent three seasons with the Texas Rangers. Also three with the Chicago Cubs before going to Boston last year. One two pitch. Sign and high, two balls and two strikes to Bird. Certainly, Bird brought here for one reason, one reason only. That's to spark this offense, produce some runs. Produced three last night. Play right field and hit the ball. Diardo's 2 2. Base hit for Bird. Lead off single. And the Pirates have a man aboard, nobody out. And Gabby Sanchez on his way to the plate. Professional hitter found the spot where there wasn't anybody and put it there. Pitch outside, he went that way. Right out toward the end of the bat. Just strong enough to power it through the infield. And the parrot loves it. Why wouldn't he? He's a bird too. Marlon wears number two. Does the parrot wear number one? Stay tuned. Maybe he should wear number also. <laughs> He's a bird also. 
Sanchez three for four last night. Big night for Gabby. They said decent numbers against Gallardo. That's part of the reason he's in there tonight. Normally you'd see the left-hander Garrett Jones playing first base against the right-handed pitcher, but Gabby's hit Gallardo pretty well. Plus he's been swinging a hot bat lately. Sanchez had an RBI in the game last night as well. 318 against Gallardo. And the pitch. Gabby takes a strike. 0 and 1. And uh, Gallardo, native of Mexico, 6'2, 215, 27 years old, came up through their system. And with these win totals, his first year, 2091, 13, and then 14, and 17, last year, 16. He has been very, very consistent. He drafted in the second round in 2004. He has panned out very nicely. Oh, one pitch. He took it low, one ball, one strike. Sanchez has hit safely in four straight games now. One thing about Gabby's game is he used to get the ball to fly out of here a little bit more often. Only seven home runs. That equals his output from all of last season. And the ground ball towards short. Segura will flip to Jeanette for one. That's all they'll get. Fielder's choice for Sanchez. Bird is retired on the four out, and there's one out. Iron City Beer presents Sky Blast, powered by Zambelli Fireworks this Saturday after the Bucks host the Cardinals at 7.05. Stay after the game as Third Eye Blind performs all their hits. If you already have tickets to the game, you can get passes to watch the show from the field at Pirates.com slash concerts. It'll be a big night here Saturday night. Third Eye Blind. Living a semi-charmed kind of life. Yep, I will stay around for that one. Right, Steve? Yep, yep. Here's John Buck's first at bat as a pirate. One out and one on. Two nothing Milwaukee. Pitch outside. Buck's been a lot of years with the Kansas City Royals organization. He mentioned earlier an all star in 2010 with the Blue Jays. And a very hot hitter for the Mets home run wise early this year. Nine of his 15 home runs came in the month of April. And he drives one to left field, a base hit. Welcome, Mr. Bird, Mr. Buck. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Now two on and one out. As John Buck gets his first hit as a pirate. Goes downstairs, gets under that breaking ball. Good contact over the head of Gene Segura. Good piece of hitting right there. Get down, get that ball in the air. Russell Martin watching on tonight, and he knows that the catching tandem got a lot deeper. Tony Sanchez will rejoin this team on Tuesday when he's called back from Double A Altoona, and they'll go with three catchers the rest of the way. Jordy Mercer has hit well against this team. Getting over 400 against the Brewers this year. 278 on the season. No balls and a strike. Two on, one out. 0 oh and 2. Pitch. Inside corner, and Jordy turns around to Dan Iasonia, the home plate umpire, and says, Is that true? Well, the already got a call, didn't he? So nothing in two to Jordy Mercer. Sanchez off of second, Buck off of first. Gallardo looks at him, now comes home. Ball and two strikes. It's one and two, and Gallardo hasn't thrown a strike yet. Gallardo, who uh, has uh, consistently been around 200 strikeouts a year for several years, not doing that this year. 141 innings, 109, the strikeout total, but the uh, last two or three years, over 200 Ks. Two balls and two strikes. Gallardo at PNC Park in his career has had some success. Four and three. 
Both 500 at this ballpark. He's kept the runs down too. Just an ERA of 218. Two two pitch. Mercer backs up Jeanette Segura with the turn too late. Runners at the corners and two outs. Sanchez safe at third. Buck forced at second. On the fielder's choice, Mercer safe at first. That'll bring up Garrett Cole. So two chances at a double play this inning, and the Brewers couldn't turn either one. And hopefully, here Cole can help his own cause. He's shown that he has the ability to do that with the first start of his. Two run single, a couple of our quick RBIs career wise. First major league at bat was a two run base hit. So a 217 average for Cole. He's five for 23. There's three runs batted in. Brewers leading two to nothing. Bottom of the second inning. Pitch called a strike. Light card of activity in the National League tonight. This is one of three National League games. Philadelphia and the Mets already done. The Mets winning 11 to 3 over the Phillies. Miami and Washington scoreless in the second. Atlanta is playing, but an interleague game against Cleveland. And they're scoreless in Atlanta in the third. One and one to Garrett Cole. One thing we see from Cole is he's an absolute competitor, whether he's pitching or at the plate. Took a strike on the inside corner. He does not have much patience uh, patience with failure. He, does, he doesn't like to be on that side of the ledger. Cole awaits the one two from Giovanni Gallardo. Runners off the corners and two down. Here's the pitch. And struck him out. Pirates leave two. They get two hits. No runs to show for it. Two nothing after two full at PNC Park. Throughout the first pitch tonight, that's Dan Marino, former Pitt Miami Dolphins quarterback, throwing to Pittsburgh native Neil Walker, and they pose for a photo afterward here at PNC Park. I'm Robbie and Smikowski, and Dan Marino, big a Pirates fan as anyone. And earlier, I asked him about what he likes about this postseason run the Buckos are making. You know, it's really exciting. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been a Pirate fan my whole life, growing up in Pittsburgh. I'm a Steeler fan too, even though I play for the Dolphins. You know, I'm still a Steeler fan, also and a Pirates fan. And uh, just a fan of the city, so it's really, it's really good to see. Happy for the city, happy for the fans that that are coming out and enjoying the Pirates, and that's what it's about. 
You know, Tim and Steve and Dan Marino is no stranger to the sport of baseball, drafted by the Kansas City Royals back in 1979. So he has a deep history, of course. He was a star pitcher at baseball, uh, Central Catholic, uh, where he played baseball and football. And the other thing is when he went to college to play football, Kent Colby remembers visits that Dan would take to the Pirates clubhouse. He would bring his offensive lineman with him to hang out. So a uh, pretty cool thing and a pretty cool moment here before the game, guys. Yeah, Nate, he's, uh, he's one of Pittsburgh's best, one of the all-time greats. Hall of Famer, and uh, he has been loved in the city of Pittsburgh since he was high school, probably before that. Scooter Jeanette fouls this one off for strike one. Back to Ann Marino, Central Catholic. But going to and Super Pitt. Bowl, I think his first year, you know, you th thought there would be multiple opportunities, but you never know when you're going to get to that dance, and you don't know how many of them there are going to be. Marino grew up in South Oakland, Parkview Avenue. And, uh, I think it's I think it's hard if you were played for the Dolphins or, or another team the way that Marino did to root for another team. But this is his hometown team. We talked about the, uh, the Steelers, of course, and always been a Pirate fan. Maybe that's the proof of the pudding. Played for another team, still beloved in his hometown. That's uh, that'll. Tell you what you need to know about Danny. One ball and two strikes. And it's low, two and two. I'm sure Marino, like anybody else, is excited that the football season in Western PA is getting set to get underway. The high schoolers are just about ready to start. Tomorrow night. That's it. Yep. It'll be a big night. Two two pitch. Hope foul. I'll tell you, Tim. Uh, I remember when I lived in Connecticut, I'd fly out to Pittsburgh every once in a while during the offseason to do something. And flying over this city, like those kind of shots, you would see hundreds, it seemed like hundreds of high school football fields as uh, it was going on Friday nights. In nice West field Pennsylvania. Uh, Monday night will be buzzing as Pitt opens with Florida State. First ACC game. Pitt. Hit ACC. Yes, it sir. just doesn't fit, does it? Well, it will now. We wish Paul Christ and his entire staff and everybody associated with them good luck. Right down to Sanchez. Gabby will take it himself. And there's one away. Well, McDonald's High School football returns to Root Sports every Thursday this fall. The action kicks off live one week from tonight, September 5th, as the Pine Richland Rams take on the Seneca Valley Raiders. Thursday, September 5th at 7 o'clock on Root Sports. It's the home of the championships, Whitfield Championships. We play the Heinz Field. That's what they play for. And there was a guy who played there for Pine Richland, representing the Rams in the Whitfield Championships in high school. Neil Walker was an exceptional football player, actually was recruited several schools, including Pitt and Penn State. Rumble up in the North Hills next Thursday. There's a pitch to Gene Segura, one ball and one strike. Now Walker was recruited as a uh, tight end uh, by at least one school, and Penn State wanted him to be a tight end. He would have had to put on a little bit of weight. Oh, trust me, that's not hard to do. On one, a bunt down to third. Pedro will field it. Throws on to first, too late, and a bunt base hit for Segura. Gabby Sanchez trying to buy the call at first, but no sale with Brian Knight, first base umpire. He gets the ball down on the ground, and it's not right at the pitcher, and not hard enough to get to the third baseman early enough. No chance at first. He's he's just too quick. Now with the Brewers having succeeded in their first steal attempt, I'd be surprised if Segura doesn't take off. National League leader with 38 stolen bases. Got great speed. John Buck hoping to get a throw off this time. Segura wastes no time and Lucroy fouls it back. And Segura going in, flaps down and realizing there's not going to be a play. Two, three, four. It's going to be hard to get him when he gets underway that quickly. Well, we appreciate the foul ball. Very 
Garrett Cole so far has given up two runs on five hits. First and Segura close. Remember, it was Segura who was at first in the first inning when Garrett Cole errantly threw over there. And Segura went all the way around to third base, ended up scoring the first run of the ball game on a Lucroy RBI base hit. And you want Garrett to put up a zero right here. A little raggedy around the edges, first two innings. So put up a zero, settle things down. Rough edges. Throw to first. Segura is one of those base dealers, two types. Uh, there are the base dealers that just have pure speed and don't have to take much of a lead, don't have to take much of a risk. And then there's the other guys that really depend primarily on break. The timing uh, needed to be really, really good. A sense of when the pitcher is going to make his decision to go to home plate. Striking it's over two. For one with an RBI tonight for Lucroy. He is grounded in the 13 double plays. Foul off. Stays on two. Mr. Lucroy has become a very accomplished. Major League performer. Catcher, he's uh, steadily improved with his offensive work. Comes into the game with 17 home runs. Drove in that run you're talking about. Kind of a key stolen base. Not one of the real speedster. That referring to uh, the first game of the series when the Brewers won at 7 to 6, creating a run. And fights off the 0 2 pitch. Starting 107th game behind the plate this year. He's even played three games at first base. We talked about that revolving door at first. Lucroy's been out there. Prior to this year, he never appeared in a major league game at first. It's been all hands on deck for the Brewers. Ball and two strikes. So they're going to be trying to piece things together next year, get people healthy. And you know, they'll have Ryan Braun back at some point. Get Corey Hart, perhaps. His contract might have something different to say. Here's the one two. Nope, the throw to first again. And Jeanette might have something to say about the future of Ricky Weeks. Well, Jeanette's been more productive both ways, defensively and offensively. So he might earn himself a position. But the problem the Brewers have, Steve, is they owe eleven million dollars to Ricky Weeks for next year. And so you figure he's going to get every opportunity. One, two. Almost. Almost got him to bite. Two balls, two strikes. That's a, a situation that teams get into these days with those big uh, salaries, those big contracts. Uh, do you just honor them because they're so big? Or do you take a chance and not have a guy play and sit on the bench and make a whole lot of money? 2 2, bouncer to second base, Walker. Flips to Mercer for one. Double play. 14th time this year. Lucroy is grounded into one. And the Pirates get out of the inning. Still 2 0 Brewers.
Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go box. Well, this little guy is hoisting the colors. <laughs> Look at him. He knows what he's doing. Rooting for his buckos. Quite a good tradition. It's our year, 2013. Pirates with 77 wins. Entering the ball game tonight, looking for number 78. With 29 games to play after tonight. This is regular season game number 133. Giovanni Gallardo facing the top of the Pirates order in the bottom of the third inning. Tablet takes a strike. We've talked so many times and for so many years about meaningful baseball in September. Don't dig your heels in. Oh one. Jose takes low. One ball and one strike. Sands been on the rotunda every night. As we head into September. That message is clear. 1-1. One, one, that's low. Two balls and a strike. That's what all teams want, Steve, isn't it? Play those meaningful games in September. Yep. A lot of teams yes. will not be playing meaningful games in September. The Pirates are one team that will be. And as it's, we approach, it's, just, it's just a great time of year. You know, there's there's action going on in the divisions. Wild card interest. Uh, the weather gets really neat. Yeah, it's a nice time of the year. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun. Three and two to Jose. Well, as we approach September, it's a couple of days away now. Sunday, September first. A lot of things can change in the game. In other words, if you're playing teams that don't have meaningful games, oftentimes you might be playing against AAA guys who are looking for a job. And that ball is going to be caught. By Chris Davis. There's one out in the Pirates half of the third inning. Good play by Davis. Sundays are kids' days at PNC Park. Join us this Sunday as the Bucks host the Cardinals at 135. All kids 14 and younger. Take home Pirates earbuds. Thanks to Chevrolet. Come early for the number one Cochran family fun zone on Federal Street. Stay after. Kids get to run the bases. Tickets, Pirates.com. September. Jason Grilly expects to rejoin the team. What date? We're not sure yet, but he pitched a simulated game yesterday. And he said all is well. Walker a base hit. Oh boy, both of these balls tagged here in the bottom half of the third inning. Well hit. Ball by Tabata Rip. It's a nice play by Davis and New Walker. Gives us that sound, that crack of the bat. I know it's hit solid. That sound, every pitcher hates it. Every hitter loves it. Andrew McCutcheon coming to the plate, still sitting on 99 career home runs. His last home run came on the 13th at St. Louis. You mentioned that Gallardo has given up 14 in his first 25 starts. It's not an exceptionally high number. A lot of balls fly out of that park he pitches in, the home park, Miller Park. Break one to catch. Catch handcuffed on that pitch. 324 is his average. He tripled his first time up. One ball and one strike to McCutcheon. Since the All Star break, 373. 54 out of 143. Closer to 375 since the break. Throw to first base and Walker dives back. Let's take a look at this ATT tweet. You can tweet us, hashtag Bucks Booth. BP Kits Coach. 
you show the rotation of umpires during Kutch's triple. One played up was at third at the end. Yep, we can give you a breakdown of what they do. They're trained to do it. Then I shown you. Came down the third base line. Okay, the second baseman goes out to center field to make sure that nothing bizarre goes on that he can't see. So nothing is needed at first base. So the first base umpire is going to home plate. Second place umpire is out there. Third base umpire is at second base. Home plate umpire at third. And then because there's nothing happening at first base, you got your first base umpire going in there. So they, they are trained what to do. And the reason it's all caused by the second base umpire. He needs to go out and see if anything crazy is happening in center field when that ball starts rolling to the wall. So he's out there, and that gives you three guys, and they know what to do. Just wants to make sure the ball isn't trapped or yep. anything like that. He's an eyewitness. So you, you wind up with umpires covering the bases that could only be involved in the action because nothing's going to happen at first. So that guy at first can come home while everybody else moves around. The first and Walker again dives back. One out, one on for the Pirates trailing two to nothing, bottom of the third. One goes to third, first goes to second, second goes to the outfield, first base comes home. It's like their version of a wheel point. Yeah. And basically. That's what they do when they change from game to game. The guy from first comes in to work home plate and they rotate from game to game that semi that way. Giovanni Gallardo ready to deliver the one two pitch. Count is even the catch. Cutchin is hit safely in 21 of his last 25 games. Pirates have had action and now each one of the three early innings is going to break the ice. 2-2. Two, 3-2. Two. Three, two. I figure the Pirates would start Walker trying to stay out of the double play. Yeah, so far a lot of contact by Pirate batters, just the one strikeout, so not a lot of swing and miss stuff. From Gallardo, and you figure Andrew to put the ball in play, so yeah. for Neil to take off. There goes Walker. Payoff pitch has popped up foul and out of play. McCutcheon's having. We've talked about it before, Steve. His two best months of the year last year, June and July, and hopefully his two best months and plus would be August, September, and October. Equal opportunity hitter. Or Bucktober, as it should be called. 3 2. That one's not a shortstop. Quick flip. They get Walker. They get McCutcheon. Yeah, he double play. Hard. Just hit it too well. Tattooed down to Segura. 6 4 3 ends the inning. No runs a hit. And that's it.
Ball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go box. Great shot of the city of Pittsburgh. Thursday night. But the score not so good right now. 2 nothing over the Brewers. This is the rubber game of a three game series with Steve Blass and Tim Neville. Robbie and Smikowski downstairs for us. And Ramos Ramirez will lead off against Garrett Cole. Garrett needs to put up another zero for the Brewers at bay until the Pirates can get on the board. He's been assisted by a couple double plays so far. That was help. Ramirez into a double play and for one takes a strike. Tim, good to see Mike Berger, old friend. Uh, oh, yeah. Mike works for the Arizona Diamondbacks, a uh, great baseball family. His uh, dad passed away several years ago. Jack, PR director of the Pirates for a lot of years. Really great man. This one deep to center field, going back, and it is gone. A home run for Ramos Ramirez, his ninth of the year, and the Brewers now lead it three to nothing. Things not going well for the youngster Cole. And Ramos Ramirez is that strong. He continues to put up massive numbers against the Pittsburgh Pirates, his former team. Hit one in the first game of the series. Goes deep to the big part of the ballpark. Up and out over the plate. You can see the expression. Garrett Cole knows that he got a lot of it. And he did. And Walker can't get that one. And Gomez has himself a second hit. He's two for two. Seven hits now for Milwaukee. And this is what happened last time out for Cole. Cole had given up a number of base hits. Uh, the home run notwithstanding, but you have a double by Davis, everything else is single. And again, Garrett, uh, good control. He has not walked a batter, but uh, sometimes that real good control is strikes that are hittable strikes. Too many in that hitting zone. Old pitch last Wednesday at San Diego. Gave up 10 hits, so the season high, career high. But two runs. Pirates couldn't get any runs. Four or enough runs. They lost that ball game two to one. Getting a late run in the eighth inning. Thank you. Davis and RBI double in the second inning. This is a game the Pirates need to get. They'd rather be tied with the Cardinals and a game behind going into that series tomorrow night. You know, coming into the game tonight, they had hit 28 base hits or 28 hits anyway in two games. They'd hope to continue. To hit, but so far Gallardo's held him to just four hits. No runs yet. You're right. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you're a game out, but you'd love to win this one, get up that half game, and go into them, uh, go into that series of them head to head. That even. Pitch out. Nothing on. And the way the schedule sits. Remember the Pirates. We'll go into St. Louis again next week and they'll wrap up the season series against the Cardinals. They'll have three more against Milwaukee in Milwaukee then next weekend in St. Louis before having to play three interleague games at Texas. Now that's going to make you feel happy, Steve. September interleague baseball. You're in a pennant race. You're going to take on a division leader in the Rangers. Well, they'll be playing against all of our division people. But, uh, not that way. And Garrett Cole, I think, would need to 
get an out here, another base hit. Not that he's going to be removed from the game, but another base hit. Uh, you would think that the phone would bring down in the bullpen just because you don't want to let this thing get out of hand. To center field, and McCutcheon waits for it. Davis is out. And there's now one out in the Milwaukee half of the fourth. Comes Caleb Kindle. Time for the whiff. Brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Now with Old Spice. Gary Cole has struck out one batter downstairs. Up on the tenth, and he goes back upstairs. So yeah, goes from downstairs to upstairs and gets him to chase. Sometimes you get a guy looking down there, get his mind downstairs looking for pitches low. You go upstairs and you surprise him. Can't resist the temptation. One on middle infield at double play depth. Kindle takes low. One and zero. Oh. Kindle made his major league debut on the 15th of June at Cincinnati. Struck out as a pinch hitter against Homer Bailey. Bailey struck out a lot of guys. One zero. Oh. Balls, no strikes. Bailey got an easy one last night, didn't he? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that that game last night. Wainwright, I think, just went to two innings, giving up nine runs. I'm wondering if Mike Matheny would come back with him uh, and start Sunday's game against the Pirates. I don't know if that's being considered or not. Foul back. Still no word on who will start for the Pirates on Sunday. When I was asked the question prior to the game today. Welcome to Mystery uh, Day. Again, Sunday is September 1st. That's the day the rosters expand. It will not be Jeff Locke. We know that. Locke has been sent to Double A. They're going to skip a start essentially, basically, uh, and, and by sending him to Double A, just opened up a roster spot for either Bird or Buck. Sanchez going with him. That opened up the other spot. Two balls and a strike to Caleb Gindle. We know two thirds of the probables for the Cardinals series. Three and one. He pitches for Cole, 32 of them for strikes. To this point, it has been a laboring evening for Garrett. And he's walked it. Let's take a look at the road ahead for the Pirates, brought to you by Nissan. Big series starting tomorrow night. Cardinals coming to town. Game one of the series. Shelby Miller, he's been doing very well. Looking for the Redbirds. He's 12 and 8, 290 his earned run average. For the Pirates, it'll be Francisco Liriano, 14 and 6, 274. Then Saturday, the matchup will be Lance Lynn and A.J. Burnett. Neither team has yet to name a starter for Sunday. Good matchups. Good action. Coming up on the weekend. This series comes out to talk with Garrett Cole after the walk to Gindle. And there is telephone communication in the part bullpen. Bullpen getting active. Ray delivered a message. Charlie Morton last night had another good outing. Went to six and three after going six and two thirds, giving up one unearned run. So he's had three very good outings in a row. He's becoming very consistent. Really, that's something the Pirates need to see out of him. That's been uh, terrific news to see what Charlie's been doing. 
Juan Francisco batting with two on and one out. And there's always an ebb and flow in the, in the starting rotation. Right now, Charlie Morton is the best starter the Pirates have right now. And that's not to say the other ones are good. They've all kind of had their moments and stretches of, of very good pitching. Right now, Charlie's got it going. John Mark Gomez loosening up. He has been a star in his own right, doing a lot of different things for the Pirates. He's been very good in the long man role. He also filled in on the rotation for a while very effectively after James McDonald went down due to injury. Francisco bounces towards short. Mercer flips to Walker for one. The turn. Double play. Oh boy. That could not have come at a better time. Outstanding work by Mercer to start that twin killing. Three nothing Brewers heading to the bottom of the fourth. Injury update. Wandy Rodriguez got some good news from noted surgeon Dr. James Andrews earlier this week. The second opinion confirmed what the Pirates doctors have been saying. That Wandy did not require surgery, but he did find inflammation in his left forearm. Out there tossing today. And they even begin a rehab assignment soon. So good news for Wandy Rodriguez. Also, yesterday, Starling Marte, who's sitting next to him, started the swing with one hand in the batting cage. And Clint Hurdle said today that he'll probably take some dry swings and start swinging with two hands. And he might even see a rehab stint toward the end of next week. That was a, a speculative comment by the manager today. But uh, Marte on the road back from the ligament injury in his hand. 0 and 1 to Pedro Alvarez. It's down by three. Bottom of the fourth. Now, Bucks need to get the bats going. They had two hits in the second inning, and that's the only inning they've had multiple hits in. A triple by McCutcheon in the first, a single by Walker in the third. And hits by Bird and Buck in the second inning. Four and two out of Pedro. And you see that sign right there? Dunster made that. It said, Get better, Starling. Young fan. Spent a lot of time and made that for Marte, who came over and got it. Oh, he's showing it off. Liked it so much, he hung it up in the dugout. Get well soon. That's what you call a personalized get well card. One ball, two strikes to Pedro. Still one and two. Three nothing Brewers as we play in the fourth inning, and uh, the Pirates have been 
kept in this ball game by three double plays first four innings three double plays turned behind Garrett Cole and that is uh, kind of kept it somewhat under control and not allowed the Brewers to really break out and do some serious damage. Pedro went after the high pitch and strikes out. He's 0 for 2. Upstairs. Look at that. will now face Marlon Bird. Bird is one for one tonight. A base hit to right field to lead off the second inning. Bird appreciative of the standing ovation he got when he struck out last night after a 14 pitch at bat against Tom Gorzolani. We've never had that happen before. Chances are, if you play in New York, like he just was, and you strike out, you're not getting a standing O. Or Philadelphia, where he broke in. You get that right. But it was because he had a 14 pitch at bat, kept falling off pitch after pitch. It was a situation that Bird didn't win the battle, but it helped the Pirates ultimately win the war. Yeah, well, the thing is, if you're in Pittsburgh, you are going to get appreciated for effort. You know, even though it's an at bat, the effort was there through 14 pitches. A testament to a lot of knowledgeable fans here, too, who understand what he did. Chopper to third base, charging his Ramirez. And Bird is out. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Direct TV blip with spectacular shots from overhead tonight. Yep, that's the illuminated gem on the North Shore. Two outs, bases empty for Gabby Sanchez. One. We reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Oh for one tonight. Let's give these now knowledgeable fans something to cheer about. They've kind of been sitting on their hands for the first three plus innings. They've been waiting for things to happen here at PNC Park. And throughout the season, a lot of good things have happened in this yard. The Pirates have really played good home baseball, and their record shows it. Four game hitting streak for Gabby. 462 during that time. Two and one. Well, he's been getting a little extra time at first base. Hoping he can start swinging the power bat a little bit more later in the season. Three and one. Gallardo, 27 years of age, making his 174th career start tonight. He's 78 and 52 in his career. Two to Sanchez. Uh, City coach Jay Bell taking a note of what he's facing here tonight in Gallardo. Three two. Ball four and the Pirates are the man aboard. Walk. Some swashbucklers out in the bleachers tonight. Mm -hmm. See, one of the great things, those are young Pirate fans. They have not seen a winning season. They have bought into this program this year. Great to see. Young Corsairs. John Buck, one for one. Two outs and a man on. And back up the middle, he's two for two. It'll be and b for the Bucks late August. Bird. Buck. 
Cooper's doing that. We'll call him Bucko. Base hit for the pirate catcher. This will bring the tying run to the plate now as Buck is at first, Sanchez at second, and Jordy Mercer. And nobody in the on deck circle currently as Gomez continues to warm up. Go or not, they want an appeal, and Brian Knight, first base umpire, says that's ball one. Just to get you up to date on the on deck circle, there's Garrett Cole out there now. Two on and two out. 1 0 coming to Jordan. Up and in. Two balls, no strikes. Once, once again, the Pirates have created action, but they have not crossed home plate. I ask you, you know, Cole comes out to the on deck circle later. Why do your pitchers wait so long to come out? I don't know. I was always anxious to get out there thinking maybe I could uh, persuade just visually my manager to let me stay in the ball game. <laughs> I got out there as quickly as I could. Maybe I think about how stupid I was. Maybe if he sees me out there, he'll change his mind and. and oh yeah, right. Hit. Yeah, right. He's already out there anyway. He may as well let him hit. Doesn't matter what the game situation is, does it? Yeah, right. Yeah, so many times you're out there as decoration. Fans of Garrett Cole, Cole yeah. 45 T-shirts. Sanchez off of second base and Buck off of first. Oh, inside to Mercer has called a strike. It's the second time that uh, Jordy has not been pleased with an inside delivery. And Gallardo's getting a wide plate tonight. That's the same pitch that was called on Jordy first at bat. A two and two. So what can you do about it? Nothing. Nothing. That's a strike. It's always going to be a strike. Get ready for this. Outside, count full, runners will go. 67 pitches now for Giovanni Gallardo. And those pivotal deliveries coming up for both Gallardo and the Pirates. Gallardo 9 and 9 this year. His ERA higher than normal at 461. Payoff pitch to Mercer. Strike three is called, and Jordy having words with Dan Iasoni, the home plate umpire. Still 3 nothing Brewers after four full at PNC Park.
for the Pirates. Great shot through the rotunda of the Clemente Bridge crossing the Allegheny. Garrett Cole back out there to start the fifth, and he was helped out last inning by a double play hit into by Juan Francisco. Really good play. Cole is appreciative of the third double play turn. And really nice work because Mercer has to go in the hole and Walker has to kind of slide by towards shortstop and throw the ball back across his body and they find a way to get it done. Three double plays to keep it at minimal damage. Really a nice double play turn. Jordan Mercer a good job defensively tonight probably a bit frustrated at the plate. Yeah they call third strike the last pitch delivered in the bottom of the fourth inning. Call third strike, but a tough pitch to, to take because Isonia is calling the inside pitches. So you see Luke Roy move over. It's a tough take only because Gallardo is getting the call in that neighborhood, getting the calls. We saw the sixth pitch, which was the strikeout on the fourth pitch that was below it and even farther inside. That was also a called strike to Mercer in that at bat. 0 2 to Gallardo. Did he go? No. One ball, two strikes. Bernardo bounced out to Pedro Alvarez at third base in the second inning. And now he strikes out. One out in the Milwaukee fifth. Eric Cole gets just his second strikeout tonight. Another great overhead shot from the direct TV blimp. Is patrolling the North Shore in downtown Pittsburgh tonight. They will be here all weekend for us through the Cardinal series as well. So we'll have some spectacular pictures to send home to you. It is going to be a wild weekend at PNC Park. It is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. We'd love to go into that with a win here, but the Pirates. Have an uphill battle. Ball game not out of hand by any stretch of the imagination. Well, if you're coming down, and a lot of you are, plan for it. Come down early. Yeah. Janetta base hit, his second of the ball game. Right over the head of Garrett Cole. Well, another single up the middle for Scooter Jeanette. Keep your eye on the pirate pitcher as. He gets out of the way. So he's protecting himself initially, but then feeling the frustration secondarily. It's the eighth hit he's given up. And I would think here in the fifth inning it'd be somewhat of a short leash as the Brewers get into the big part of their batting order. And another hit given up by Garrett. And Segura is. Got the great speed, tough to double up. Pedro Alvarez, very short in at third base. Dare we think of another double play? It would be tough to turn with Segura. We found that out in the first inning. Pirates have turned three of them. Yeah, Segura would have to hit the ball really hard. The way that McCutcheon hit the ball to him when McCutcheon was doubled up. Exactly. Catch it a rocket to the shortstop in the third inning with Walker at first and one out. Turned into an easy double play for the Brewers with Segura making the initial play starting off the twin kill. Strike call is uh, Cole gets the inside yeah. part of the plate. And what you have to do, you have, you have to deal with it. If he's going to call those pitches strikes, both as a pitcher, you want to work with it like that. And as a batter, you can't take too many. I mean, that's just the way it is, whether you like it or not. They, that's the reality of the strike zone that Dan has tonight. Plate is wide. Pitchers like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't have to throw it over any part of the plate. You get a strike. That's what Steve Carlton used to say. I'm not going to throw a strike until they force me to. <laughs> so the iron. Well, it makes sense. Yeah. It and makes sense. Why would you? The irony of this whole thing with Segura with his great speed, he's hitting the 14 double plays. 
How does that work? 2 1 pitch from Cole to Segura. We'll wait the throw to first instead. And Scooter Jeanette dives back. Pirates trailing 3 to nothing, top of the fifth inning. Series is even at a game apiece. Pirates are 10 and 5 against the Brewers this year. 2 1, a bouncer to short. Mercer flips to Walker. Double play. Again, just keep turning them. Fourth double play the Pirates have pulled off tonight. Now they need to go get some hits for Garrett Cole. in Pirates history on this date in 2000. The Pirates beat the Giants 8-0 as Chris Benson pitched eight shutout innings for the Bucks. Barry Bonds singled off Chris in the first, but it was the last hit he allowed as he struck out seven in his eight innings of work and earned his ninth win of the season. Josias Manzanillo pitched a hitless ninth to finish the game. That's the day automotive. We're going to make your day. With Steve Blass and Robbie Inspikowski, Tim Everett at PNC Park. Three nothing Brewers. That was only 13 years ago. Only. <laughs> yeah. Seems like yesterday. Chris Benson, Chris Benson and Joseas Manzanillo. Garrett Cole leads off. Trying to get on base somehow. Takes a strike. It'll be Cole and back to the top of the order. Jose Tabata and Neil Walker. It's trying to find a way to get that zero off the scoreboard against Gallardo. Pitch outside one and one. Ball one strike pitch. It's two and one now to Cole. Cole struck out swinging in the second. He's 0 for 1. 5 for 24 on the season. Leonardo agreeing with the pitch from Lucroy. Delivers outside three and one. So maybe, just maybe Cole gets a free pass to start the end. See him swinging here at all. Oh, yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> now, maybe. On a 3 2 count. Yeah, yeah. Comes the payoff from Gallardo. And Cole strikes out for the second time. One down for the Pirates in the bottom of the fifth. Tomorrow night, a free shirt Friday when the Cardinals come to town. 7.05, the first pitch at PNC Park. All fans take home a Pirates t-shirt at the gates, courtesy of Remax. 
Get to Federal Street before the game for a Budweiser block party featuring local live music. And you can meet former Pirate and current broadcaster John Wayner at the Budweiser bar. For tickets, go to Pirates.com slash Free Shirt Friday. The Rock will be in the building. The Rock's going to be out socializing. Out, outside the building. Yep. So make sure you go over and say hello to Rock tomorrow. No balls and one strike to top of the one out. Now 0-2. I'm sure John will have a good time at the park tomorrow night. Oh yeah. Yep. Be hosting. He knows about uh, service and how to entertain, how to host. He knows all about that stuff. And now that's the other rock right there. So Bill hey. Schroeder. Bill Schroeder, the Brewers broadcaster. Working with Brian Anderson. His name is Rock, too. So sometimes when the Brewers and Pirates get together, you'll hear Rock, and both of them will turn around. Yeah. Jose strikes out. Two strikeouts in the inning for Gallardo. He's picking up the strikeout pace. There's Mr. Mr. Fourth, in the fifth. Mr. Baseball, Bob Euchre, doing radio for the Brewers. Good to see Bob on the trip, feeling better, with some health challenges and issues. He is one great guy. <laughs> Neil Walker batting with nobody on and two men out. Bob Euchre has a statue. He does. He's got a statue that was dedicated to him last season outside of Miller Park. And he carried the dedication on live television in Milwaukee. He has been the man there. He brought in a lot of dignitaries to uh, basically roast him and. And uh, he does a good enough job on himself. Oh, he's, he's got that great self-deprecating humor. Strike his call to Walker. Remember his Hall of Fame speech when he was dug. He said, it's great to be here, but I thought I would make it as a player. <laughs> <laughs> he had, a, he had a, a challenging playing career. 1-1 one, one pitch. Walker skies this one to shallow left. Segura, the shortstop out, still drifting, calls off Davis and makes the catch. Pirates gone in order in the fifth. Go to the sixth. We nothing. Milwaukee. up tonight looking beautiful and two guys in the minor league system that made a good point this year from the West Virginia power Josh Bell and Tyler Glasnow selected to the postseason South Atlantic League all-star team Josh Bell you remember was a second round draft pick in 2011 
great numbers, helping them in a playoff chase right now. Josh Bellows with that in Glasnow. The strikeout numbers were off the charts, 160 strikeouts. That set a West Virginia power record. And Tim and Steve, remember Josh Bell? The biggest issue with him was injury. He had a big knee surgery a couple years ago when he was uh, just drafted. And Neil Huntington told me earlier today that he was able to, uh, the key with Bell this season, they nursed him like a pitcher a little bit. They gave him a day here. They gave him a day there. Whenever he needed his proper rest, they wanted to kind of nurse him along to see how he would feel and what level he would produce uh, playing a full season with that knee. He said everything checked out fine. And he's, uh, he's feeling great, and he's ready to continue this run here for the West Virginia Power. So good news, more good news, I should say, down on the farm for the Buckos. Yeah, Bell's recovered from that surgery last year. Uh, the Power getting close to clinching a playoff spot in the Sally League. That's also good news. Oh, one to Lucroy. Pops this one up to the right side of the infield. Neil Walker will corral it. And there's one out. One gone for the Brewers in the sixth. A little too early for the Shark Tank. But it's ferocious. That is ferocious. Looks like uh, he's had a very satisfying lunch. 3D t shirt. You don't want to be in there. No. You're not coming out if you go in there. There's around this Ramirez. Follows this one off for strike one. Eric Cole hanging in there. It's a three nothing ball game. He's not let the game get out of hand. Although you know you get the idea with what Gallardo did in the fourth and fifth and you can see this with, with really good major league pitchers. At some point you can almost sense they're taking control of the ball game. Gallardo, uh, Gallardo is looking like that right now. Signed to Ramirez one and one. Ramirez hit into a double play in the first inning. Hit a solo home run in the fourth, his second home run of the series. Has nine on the year, 36 runs batted in. Cole gets ahead of him, one and two. Giovanni Gallardo taking a bit of a break in a poor dugout. Very impressive bottom of the fifth inning with a couple of strikeouts and a pop up. And two strikeouts in the fourth. Work to be down here in the top of the six, but another zero up. 96 mile an hour fastball delivered by Garrett Cole. Double your defense tonight with the four double plays. Two and two to Ramirez. Cole has given up eight hits tonight. Moving the home run to Ramirez. And he gets him here. Strike out number three. Two men out. Cole comes back in the sixth. Have a strong start in the unit. You, you kind of tip your, your cap to Garrett because he has kept it together and it's not been uh, just squeaky clean. It's a strikeout of Ramirez there and still dealing, still pitching in the sixth inning in a ball game that has not been determined yet. Not in the books by any means. Strike one to Gomez. He is two for two with a run scored and a stolen base tonight. 289 is his average. He has 18 homers on the board. Ground ball toward Mercer. And a clean inning for Garrett Cole. Brewers go down one, two, three. McCutcheon, Alvarez, and Bird coming up for the Pirates.
on Root Sports is brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit PGHKiaDealers.com and by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Fox. Pirates batting in the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, the boat's moored on the north shore. Uh, River Walk. Jolly Rogers flying tonight. We want to see more of those. Pirates trying to get some runs, trying to find a way to get to Giovanni Gallardo tonight. Garrett Cole, a pretty good inning in the sixth. Tiring a side in order and getting a strike out of Aramis Ramirez. Yeah, you got to find something to jumpstart this crowd. Andrew has a tendency to do that quite often. Do it. They see three infielders on the left side again. That's how the Brewers will shift for him. And he hits it right into the glove of Ramirez. Right on the screws, right at Ramirez. One out. It's about as hard as he hit that double play ball back in the third inning. He was hitting everything on the nose, and that was an atom ball. So one out. Still wondering, what do I have to do? What you have to do is just keep hitting the ball that hard. And it'll work out. Pedro looking to hit one hard. Takes a ball. He is 0 for 2 tonight. He's 0 for his last six. His last hit came in the seventh inning on Tuesday night in game one of this series with his 32nd home run of the season, clanging it off the right field foul pole. This one hard foul out of play. One third baseman, he's just two behind Ramos Ramirez on the Pirates all time single season list. It appears as though he'll catch him. Bobby Bonilla at 24. And Jim Morrison, 1986 with 23. Ground ball to Segura, who shifted over toward the second base position. He throws him out, two gone. Six to three on the put out, even though Segura was over where Scooter Jeanette normally plays. And that was out short right field in the shift. And when a guy like Gallardo is dealing like this, uh, you have a tendency to look up at the pitch count. Can we get him out of there? Get into the bullpen, and see if we can do any work against them. But right now he is pitching very well. He's, he's kind of found his groove. That body language, even moving around the mound, like at this point. Uh, at least he's in control of this thing. Bird is one for two. All one to Marlin. And this is a guy that's not, he's not one of those flamethrowers. I mean, he'll get up there 91, 92, maybe, maybe 93 miles an hour, but he doesn't have to throw at 97 or 98 miles an hour to be successful. He's proven that in the last four years. This one hit along the left field, but drifting back is Davis, and he will make the catch. But came back a little bit. Pirates gone in order for the second straight inning. Gallardo has retired seven in a row.
Catch the rest of the season in HD quality. Watch every out-of-market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. I'll be in Smikowski. There is a special viewer watching on MLB.tv tonight. There is, and that is in the state of Nevada, way out west. That is uh, Mrs. Josephine Searage, mother of Pirates pitching coach Ray Searage. If you look above Ray's right ear, I don't know how close we can get, but it says, love, mom, a heart sign, and mom. And Josephine Searage is uh, recovering uh, from a knee replacement. 86 years of age, still going strong. And Mrs. Searage, Ray wanted me to tell you, he's thinking about you each and every day. He's got you on his hat. Been there about a week. This is the second time he's put it on his hat. But, hey, he never forgets about you, Mom. And he's thinking about you right now. And he wanted me to get that message out to you. And best of luck from all of us for speedy recovery with that knee replacement. Good pitching coach and good man. Got to uh, spend a little time with Ray Searage. You enjoy the... Enjoy the company. Chris Davis leads off for the Brewers. 1-0 pitch. Garrett Cole. It's inside 2-0. By the way, uh, just when Ramos Ramirez was hitting that home run, we were talking about the Berger family. So I want to send along a uh, shout out to say hello to Nell Berger. Mike's mom. There's a bouncer to Pedro. One out. Ladies in baseball. I met Mike a long time ago. Yeah. He was in double A. Yeah. I yep. first started with the Nashua Pirates in New Hampshire when they were in the Eastern League. And Mike was. Uh, it was just last Thursday, wasn't it? It was not. <laughs> it was one of those, uh, I think, 1985. Yeah. Yep. Now uh, Mike was, is doing just fine. I was four years old broadcasting this game. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, Caleb Gindel takes a strike. Mike was one of our players that year. Also, a couple other guys you might know. Felix Fermin, Bobby Bonilla, yeah, yeah, Bib yeah. Roberts, yeah, yeah. Osias Manzanillo, who yeah. we just talked about. Yeah, very animated pitcher, as we all remember. But Mike was very popular. Still remembered there. To left field and top of the circles behind it. Two down. Take a look at Garrett Cole's reaction here. Disappointed in that pitch. I thought it was down and in. Kind of jamming him up a little bit. Had to try to fight it off. He has pretty high standards for himself. Number one overall pick in 2011 out of UCLA. And he's worked very hard, very hard tonight. Pitch to Francisco. He belts this one a long way. Foul. His pitch count is okay because he has had three innings where he has faced just three batters with the help of those double plays and. Uh, Couple of times, and then the uh, one, two, three, six, and has a chance to have a one, two, three, seven. So he has certainly got it together. And uh, sometimes it just takes you long enough during the course of a game if you're able to stay in. Okay, I, I can get in a groove. Now there may have been some damage done early, but uh, he continues to be out there and he continues to work hard, and he has gotten it together. A nine pitch inning for Garrett Cole. He has retired the sign in order two straight innings. Stretch time at PNC Park. Brewers leading three to nothing. We're going to keep you right here at PNC Park. It's time for the seventh inning stretch.
shots from the Allegheny Health Network Super Mode tonight. Still to sit down and catch the bottom of the seventh inning. Pirates looking for some runs. Still not on the scoreboard. Giovanni Gallardo has been keeping the Bucks off the board. A little exercise will help. Yep. Yep. Gabby Sanchez will lead off. All for one with a walk tonight. Balls in one strike. Maybe this is the inning. Pirates can finally get to it. Yeah, we uh, saw one of the uh, graphics. Uh, Jim Morrison. We got to break on through to the other side. Very good. Song. Very good. Break on through the scoreboard. Jim Morrison would come to the plate. The organist Vince Lashide would play "Light My Fire." Yep, but people are strange. <laughs> Justin Wilson. He's got fire in his left arm. Warming up. Two-one pitch to Gabby. Three and one. Base runners. Base runners. Balls one strike to Gabby. Sanchez drills this one to center field. Back it goes, and it is going to be caught against the wall by Gomez. Wrong part of the ballpark, or we are on the board. Got a lot of it. Last night, that would have been up in the shrubbery. Balls were carrying better last night. Look at this shot from the direct TV blimp. Just a few feet in front of that corner at 399. Gomez hauls it in, and there's one out. Abby gave it a ride. Couldn't get it out. There's Buck, two for two. Ground ball left side. He's three for three. Bucko John. With more on John Buck, here's Robbie. Well, guys, we talked about Dan Marino being a good baseball player in high school and ended up having a Hall of Fame football career. How about John Buck? He was a football and baseball player himself, but he opted to play baseball instead of football. And that was on the advice of his cousin and his uncle. Now, his cousin is a guy named Jason Buck who played on the Cincinnati Bengals back when they made the uh, Super Bowl back against Joe Montana. Remember the Montana to Taylor pass going across the middle of the end zone? Well, Buck's cousin was on that Bengals team. I don't know if he was on the field at the time, but anyways, they said, look, you're not taking hits every day. It's like taking 50, 100 train wrecks a day. We want you to play baseball. We want you to have your body intact after a while. And also, the players' union is so much better in baseball than it is in football. And uh, obviously, Buck's seen proof of that with him getting traded. And we talked about last night, the Mets picking up the lease for both Buck and Marlon Bird. But it was a tough decision for him as he was a football star as well in high school. Mercer. 6-4-3. Double play ends the inning. Pitcher's best friend and Giovanni Gallardo had one that time as murder. Mercer rather. Grounds into the double play. John Buck though three for three. Pirates still without a run.
by authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Between innings, Brewers starting pitcher Giovanni Gallardo speaking with Ron Renicki, the manager. Looks like Gallardo wants to continue. And so does Garrett Cole. Cole will start the eight through seven. Three runs, two earned on eight hits. Walked one and struck out four. It's been a serviceable performance, but he just hasn't had any run support behind him. This would be his first game of going eight innings. Looking at this chart. And right now he's in a quality start situation. He has she didn't get all dressed up for nothing, Steve. She wants a win. Looking good. Looking good. And Garrett has gone seven innings twice. Well, Garrett will not stay in. A pinch hitter will come up instead. Norichka Aoki, who did not start tonight, normally the starting right fielder. Aoki will bat for Gallardo, whose night comes to a conclusion. To Ioki in for a strike. Gallardo putting his helmet bat away. Dan Finnegan, 76 78. Hey guys, I know Gallardo is good, but what's he doing so well? The hitters can't uh, make good contact. Well, one of the things you can go right back to basics, and it sounds like an oversimplification. He's making good pitches. He's staying out of the real good part of the hitting zone, the real good part of the strike zone. And again, he's not overpowering, but. Uh, I don't know how else to describe pitchers that are doing a good job not striking people out other than they're they're making quality pitches and especially when they have to. Uh, it's, it's not dazzling. I didn't dazzle you uh, with, with speed. But, uh, if you're getting outs for seven innings and you're keeping a major league team off the scoreboard I don't care who they are. You're simply making good pitches. Changing speeds mixing it up. Foul tip into the glove of Buck. And it's three and two. Now Brandon Kinsler warming up. Trying to get them to Henderson. Three two. Okay, slaps this one foul. Henderson, very, very impressive uh, first game of the series when Brewers won seven to six with. A lot of speed. 96, 97. Well, those are your starting pitchers. Gallardo's already out of the game. This should be it for Garrett Cole with his spot leading off the bottom of the eighth. Gallardo can win it, can't lose it. To the left side, Alvarez spinning, throwing, got him. Pretty play by Pedro. This wide of third base. Has to turn. Not too much time to set himself, but finds the accurate lane over to first base. Okay. Limping into the dugout came up a little bit lame after his sprint down to first. Scooter Jeanette, the leadoff man now up and Ioki walking gingerly in the Brewers dugout heading down the tunnel. I'd like to see Garrett Cole put a nice finish on his outing. He really has worked hard to keep it together. One base runner in the last four innings for Garrett. The Jeanette base hit, but he was erased with the double play that Segura hit into. 1 1 pitch to Jeanette. Now it's 1 and 2. Jeanette singled in the first inning. 
grounded out to first base in the third and then singled again in the fifth. Both of his base hits have been up the middle. And Cole working in the eighth inning still well under 100 pitches delivered. This will be number 93. Fouled it off. Fought that pitch off. Self preservation there. Get the bat on the ball, keep it away from your head. Ray Surge keeping an eye on the pitch count. Cole has only gone over 100 pitches once. That was on the second of this month when he threw 102 pitches in a loss against the Colorado Rockies. Five and a third. And that last pitch still delivered here in the eighth inning at 97 miles an hour. I mean, Physically, Gary Cole is a stud. I mean, he's put together like a young Roger Clemens. Three and two now to Jeanette. And the strikes to balls ratio is pretty good on 95 pitches. 60 of the 95 pitches are good for strikes. Here's the payoff. And Jeanette lines one off the tip of the glove of Mercer in the left center. Three hit night for Jeanette. That might be enough for Eric Cole. Yep, John Buck jumping up, trying to help his shortstop elevate. Almost. How about one more double play? Because he is close to being removed from this game. As the throw is 97 pitch. Pirates have turned four double plays behind Garrett Cole tonight. Segura has hit into one of them. His last time up in the fifth with Jeanette aboard. Jeanette goes, and this one is gapped to right center field. Marlon Burr guns it into second base, and Burr's now on one out. Would have had runners at the corners, but the ball got through. Cole backing up and taking the extra base is Segura. Not good right there. Instead of keeping the force play in order now, you've got two men in scoring position. Just kind of getting through the wicket. And a gift, 90 feet. Right through the legs of Walker, and that is going to chase Garrett Cole. And Cole will leave after seven and a third. He's responsible for two men on base. Just didn't get him any run support tonight. Three nothing Brewers. Nothing is the score in favor of the visiting Brewers. And they've chased Garrett Cole out of the ball game. After seven and a third innings. As we 
Take you from the direct TV blimp on the North Shore and into PNC Park once again. Ryan Morris takes over for the Pirates. Young right hander making his 45th appearance. Morris will face Jonathan Lucroy of the Brewers. We are at 316. So Morris takes over. Cole is out. Cole on the hook right now. Second straight outing that Cole has given up 10 base hits. Pirates somehow squeeze up the infield and try to uh, keep it at a 3 0 game. Bolton hits three runs, two of them earned. That's to the moment. He's still responsible for Jeanette at third base and Segura at second. The error charged to Marlon Bird on the throw. That allowed Segura to move from first to second. So now the infield will come in, try to cut down the run. One out, Luke Croy up. Luke Croy's got an RBI already tonight with a single in the first. Morris throws it by him for a strike. Interesting uh, scoring decision. I thought I saw with a naked eye the ball go through the legs of Neil Walker. But to, that's secondary concern. Segura yeah. got to second base. Balls are going to come in on a hop from outfielders often, and infielders have to block those. And, uh, there's a blank you surprised that Bird got the error. But either way, an error is an error, and a runner moved up. Ryan Morris out in front, 0 and 2. He got a chance to work around the strike zone, get him to chase something, get a strikeout out in front. He's got some wiggle room. He's got first base open. Nothing in two to Lucro. Still nothing in two. A nine nothing lead over Miami late in that ball game. DC. Miami still ahead of Cleveland in interleague play, and the Mets pounded Philly earlier today. Light card of action in the National League. American League has a few games as well. Thursday night. Thursday is one of the rotating travel days. So a lot of teams play series Monday through Wednesday or Monday through Thursday day and then travel for the weekend series. 0 2 pitch. Inside one ball and two strikes. 11 to 3, the Mets beat the Phils. 3 1, Atlanta beats Cleveland in interleague play. There you see a crowded infield with base runners, infielders, pitcher, catcher, umpire. Busy place. A stretch and the one two pitch. Down to third base. Alvarez fields it. And it throws to first, but a foul ball is called. Pedro just went through and made the play and let the umpires make the call. Yeah, and that was going to be a difficult situation. And kind of a late call of fair foul. And Pedro never really had a grip on the ball initially. Home plate umpire Dan Iasonia looking down the line made the call. Brian still trying to find a strikeout delivery to Lucroy. That's exactly what you're looking for right now. Leave these runners where they are. Get another out. Leave them again. See what you can do with Gallardo out of the ball game. To shallow right center. McCutcheon on the run. He'll make the catch. Jeanette trying it. He's going to score. Scooter Jeanette scoots home and makes it a 4 0 Milwaukee lead. 
Big run for the Brewers. Not quite shallow enough. Maybe had to go over. Does a good job getting it into home plate, but Jeanette has the good speed, and well, John Buck has to reach over a little bit up the first baseline. He finds a way to sneak in the back door. The drive by slide. Yeah, those players running down the third baseline, they can see exactly what the catcher is doing if he has to move it at all up the first base side. Well, that leaves them all that room behind the catcher. Two outs, runner at second, Ramos Ramirez facing Morris. That run charged to Garrett Cole, so now four runs, three of those earned. All he can do is sit and watch right now. Error charge to Bird had nothing to do with that run, so that's an earned run. Ball in one strike, two Ramirez. Ron is homered in the fourth. A late start due to injury this season. Coming on late for Milwaukee. Here was the bat they brought in from the Cubs to play one of the corner infield spots that was supposed to provide the RBIs that Prince Fielder left behind when he went to the Tigers two seasons ago. It hasn't quite worked out that way, although Ramirez did have a good first season with the Brewers. Morris and Buck having a conversation. Four runs on ten hits for the Brewers. No runs on six hits for the Pirates tonight. Quiet night after a lot of offense. What the 28 base hits first two games of the series. Gallardo has been tough on the Pirates career wise and especially tough tonight. It's a strike called one and two. One and two to Ramirez. Pirates will have a pinch hitter. Leading off the bottom of the eighth inning, then it'll be the top of the order, Tabata and Walker. Right to Walker. And Pirates to the bat rack in the bottom of the eighth. Well, the run comes in for Milwaukee. It's now four to nothing Brewers.
Dan Marino starting us off there. And let's go, Bucks. And throughout the first pitch here tonight at PNC Park. Pirates try not to let them down or any of their fans tonight as they look for a way to get now to the Milwaukee bullpens. Ben and Kinsler comes on to take over for Giovanni Gallardo. 4 0 Milwaukee lead. Unieski Betancourt comes in to play first base. As Kinsler comes on to pitch. Gallardo, the seven score was sending six hits, a walk, five strikeouts. Kinsler. ERA under three. 61 innings, 50 strikeouts. Felix PA going to give it a try. PA has been pretty good in the pinch hitting role. Left handed batter. Gives the Pirates an option off the bench. Guy who's been in the big leagues for a little while, although it had been two years. The day he was called up to the Pirates in San Diego. PA, that's one to center field, but Gomez is going to catch up to it. Right in front of the track, one out. One gone for the Pirates in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And PA gives them an interesting option off the bench, guy who could do a few things in terms of playing the outfield, being a left handed bat. Still got some speed. Yeah, be a good pinch running option. PA, who spent the majority of the season in the minor leagues, now will be here for the duration. Be with the Bucks the rest of the way. It'll be kind of gratifying for him. He had a good spring. Jose Tabata hits it right to Betancourt for the out. Two gone. PA had a good spring. Didn't make the club. Was disappointed. Went down to Indianapolis. Did everything he could do there. Certainly was recognized. The Pirates brought him up late. Now he'll finish the season in the big leagues. Well, two down for Neil Walker. And if they don't get something going here with two outs, it's going to be a tough task. Mr. Henderson has been very effective. Field of third and the third base umpire Jerry Davis rings up a strike. 0 1 1 to Walker. And ball one strike now to Neal. That's the question. Will you see Henderson if the Pirates don't do anything with a four run lead, non save situation? Time view from up above. Breaks his bat, rolls it to Segura. Three up and three down for Brandon Kinsler. As the Pirates go quietly in the bottom of the eighth. We'll head to the ninth. Brewers up four runs.
you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. We thank the folks up above in the airship for the great shots tonight. They'll be here all weekend through the St. Louis series as well. Four runs on 10 hits for Milwaukee. 0 6 and 2 of the line for the Pirates. Felix P.A. remains in the game. He'll play left field. Jose Tabata is out. Wilson comes in in Tabata's spot in the order. And Justin will be the third pitcher used by Clint Hurdle tonight. Oh, John Buck behind home plate gets a little introduction to three of the members of the Pirates pitching staff. Well, he's getting a crash course. I asked Clint Hurdle about it yesterday. So the guy comes in as a catcher of all positions. How long does it take before he gets to understand this pitching staff? He said, well, he's a veteran. He's been around. He's got his ways of doing it. We're going to find out. And Buck was told after the game last night that he'd be catching this game tonight. So he went and grabbed a bunch of video on Garrett Cole and members of the bullpen and went home last night. Spent that time and, and time today. I say home. I mean the hotel. <laughs> the yeah. temporary housing. Wherever he is. Uh, and just prepared. He just did what he could to prepare. Didn't forget about the bat either. Three for three. Oh one. Gomez. That's gloved by Sanchez. Toss to Wilson. He gets him. Nice play all the way around. Good pick here. And then a good feed. And Justin Wilson doing his job getting over there. Justin, just in time. Why do major league catchers not paint their helmets like hockey goalies? You're gonna have to ask a catcher. Actually, uh, I believe his with the Mets was painted uh, with the Marlins. Actually, I remember his was painted by, like a hockey goalie. Mm -hmm. And I think it might have been with the Mets, but he just got here, so. Got this one, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see something a little different design wise down the road here. But I do remember him with the Marlins having a very interestingly colored mask. A, uh, different kind of design. Palm trees on it. Part of the Miami skyline was on it. Maybe you could uh, do a, a shark design. That'd be all right. Gotta catch the sharks. Yeah, but you know, if you want to catch sharks, you gotta throw some chum out, right? Off, off the edge of the boat. And the, uh, one he had with the Mets and the Statue of Liberty on one side, and New York skyline on the other. It's Davis. Swings and knocks his own helmet off. So, any suggestions for what he should put on his mask for Pittsburgh? Well, let me think about that. I'll come up with something. I mean, obviously, the skyline is one of the beautiful skyline he could use. So, be the Jolly Roger. Mm -hmm. One and two to Davis. Could just maybe keep that. Keep a very professional look. I'm guessing we're going to see some design work. He's probably got a guy. You know, everybody's got a guy. Well, the inflated, uh, not the inflated, but the uh, the stuff chart <laughs> looks like it's inflated. They have it hanging out there now. To right field and Marlon Bird on the run. Makes the catch. Two gone for the Brewers in the top of the ninth inning. How about that shot? That might not be bad on one side. And maybe just the, the the rivers coming together, form the Ohio. The fountain at the point. Caleb Gindle. That, that is a great portrait right there. Confluence. Beautiful fountain at the point. Oh. 
Maybe just a rendering of the old building that uh, Froggy's place was in. You know that one well? Yeah, that's a Pittsburgh landmark for sure. How nice is that? Yeah, that's pretty. Confluence of the three rivers. Oh, two pitch. I'm going to come back here. Justin Wilson will retire. Gindle. And the Brewers done in order. Pirates need a big inning as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Andrew McCutcheon will lead it off. Touch with a triple tonight. He's one for three. He's going to need some help as the Bucks find themselves down four, heading into the bottom of the ninth. Tomorrow, the Pirates and the Cardinals game one of a three game set coverage begins here on Root Sports at 630 with Pirates pregame as the Bucks and Cards have a central division battle on the way tomorrow night. Shelby Miller, the right hander, the rookie at 12 and 8 will take on Francisco Liriano, the Pirate lefty 14 and 6. So a big one tomorrow night. Pirates hoping for a big bottom of the ninth here. They need four to extend the game, five to win it. And not going to be very easy. With McCutcheon facing Kinsler, who's out for his second inning of work. Yep, non save situation at this point, but Henderson is warming up. Although Kinsler has been on quite a roll, he's been unscored upon in 26 of his last 29. See Logan Schaefer out and left. Which is a ball to McCutcheon, one and one. Schaefer was a defensive replacement late in Tuesday night's game, first game of the series. Pirates have been held off the scoreboard tonight. And McCutcheon takes inside, it's two and one. Andrew has had three very impressive at bats. He's one for three because he's hit the ball at people. Hard shot for double play and a line drive to Ramos Ramirez. Going inside on Kutch. Uh, count even two balls and two strikes. Kinsler last worked against the Pirates on Tuesday. Tossed a perfect eighth inning in that game with one strikeout. Brewers would win that one seven to six. Pirates continue to come back a couple of different times in the game, but couldn't quite get over the hump. And in danger of losing this series to the Brewers, two games to one, if they can't get at least four runs here. And it stays even two and two. And Kinsler's been tough. He's unscored upon in 26 of his last 29 appearances. Kinsler and McCutcheon. Half 
Nothing over the heart. Nothing outside. Everything inside. Why not pitch to the umpire strike zone too? It's inside again. On the count full three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Payoff pitch from Kinsler. All four, and the Pirates have a base runner. Leadoff man is aboard. First, Ben Cole will hold him on. And Jim Henderson, the closer, has been heating up in the Brewers' pen. Pedro's 0 for 3 tonight. And a bounce to the first. Ben Cole goes to second for one, back to first. And a double play. Things are looking rather bleak for the Pirates now. Night for double plays all over the board, both teams. Turned the hard way and the quick release by Bettencourt. Unconventional, but done well, especially when you've got a right hand throwing first baseman who has to kind of throw in the same direction that the runner is taking off. He doesn't have that angle that a lefty would have throwing, but Bettencourt coming in for defense tells you why. Came in for defense. Marlon Bird is one for three. Pirates down their final out suddenly. <laughs> 285 the average, 22 home runs, 74 RBIs. Good numbers now in the middle of the Pirates lineup to add to Alvarez and McCutcheon. Hopes to be a big factor down the stretch. One one to Marlon Bird. Strokes it to left field. Here Schaefer makes the catch, and that's a ball game. And the Pirates shut out in the series finale tonight. And are now a game behind the Cardinals in the Central Division standings heading into game one tomorrow night against St. Louis here at PNC Park. A 4 0 win for the Brewers. They take two out of three. Disappointing night for the Pirates' offense tonight. Garrett Cole gave them better than seven innings tonight, but Pirates didn't get him any runs. Yep, you got to hand it to Guillardo. Uh, he continues his mastery over the Pirates now, 11 and 4. And uh, well, you can't dwell on this one. It's gone. Dig your heels in the Cardinals. The Redbirds are coming. The Redbirds are coming. And uh, it should be just some wild weekend. So a lot of bucko baseball, a lot of energy. Stay with us. Pirates now 77 and 56. The game back. Heading into that series tomorrow night. Shelby Miller, Francisco Liriano, the pitching matchup there. Let's go to Rob King and Kent Colby now.